The name of this tutorial is Blender 2.63 BMesh Tutorial Part 1. The purpose of this tutorial is to compare some pre-BMesh and post-BMesh modeling operations to give you a flavor for why BMesh is a good thing. BMesh is a rewrite of the modeling architecture in Blender to support polygons of any number of sides. Before Blender 2.63, Blender only supported triangles, three-sided polygons, and quadrilaterals, informally called quads, or four-sided polygons. With BMesh, Blender can create polygons with any number of sides. We'll start with subdivide. Subdividing is a good place to begin looking at BMesh because subdivide actually is an edge-related edit operation. You're basically splitting edges in half. Edges correlate to sides of polygons. Subdivide either explicitly splits an edge, if an edge is selected, or implicitly splits the edges formed by the selected vertices and or faces. Before Blender 2.63 with BMesh, the face could only be three-sided triangle or a four-sided quad. With BMesh, the face can have any number of edges. This makes for a cleaner topology, making it easier to add detail to your model. First, I'm going to show you how subdivide worked before Blender 2.63 and highlight the problems it created. I'm in a pre-BMesh version of Blender. With the default cube selected, I'll tab into edit mode, press A to unselect everything. I'll select the two top front vertices and press the subdivide button, expecting just to split the edge defined by the vertex. What happened? I'll press shift tab and select edge select mode. Since Blender couldn't deal with polygons of greater than four sides, it was forced to split the top face into three triangles by adding two edges, one from the newly created vertex, defining the split edge, to the top left vertex, and another from the newly created vertex to the top right vertex. In addition, Blender was forced to split the front face into three triangles as well. A total of six triangles had to be created just to split an edge. The only way to split an edge without affecting the rest of the mesh would be to delete any faces bordering the vertex created by the split. This creates another problem. I'll create a new Blender file with the default cube, tab into edit mode, and press the A key to unselect everything, and go to face select mode. I'll select the two faces bordering the edge I want to subdivide. Press the delete key and select only faces. Now I'll go into Edge Select mode, select the edge to subdivide, and click the Subdivide button. Now the edge has been split in two, but at the cost of having to delete two faces. To sum up, with the limit of triangles and quads, subdividing can easily produce either unnecessary tri triangles or unnecessary holes in your mesh, or more likely both. That extra geometry has nothing to do with your modeling, it just gets in the way. Let's see how subdivide works in BMesh. I'm in Blender 2.63 with the default scene. I'll tab into edit mode, press the A key to deselect everything, go into edge select mode, select the edge, and click the subdivide button. No extra triangles were added. The edge was cleanly split. We still have six faces on the cube that we started with. I'll go into vertex select mode. Look at the topmost face. It's still one face, but now it has five sides instead of four. BMesh can create a pentagonal face, so there's no need to go any further. There are no triangles and no holes. I think you'll agree that this is easier to deal with than all those extra triangles and holes. I feel that it's just the design limitation of the modeling architecture. Obviously, this is a simple example, but it's easier to see how modeling anything more complicated will produce many more of these types of problems, especially when you need more detail. Let's look at something a bit more complex, a mesh circle. If you watched my Bezier circle tutorial, where I showed the difference between a mesh circle and a Bezier circle, you'll know that a mesh circle is not a circle at all, but a regular polygon, by default a 32 agon. I'm back in pre-BMesh version of Blender. I'll go into object mode and add a mesh. Shift A mesh circle. Go to the operator panel and check the fill checkbox. I'll tab into edit mode and go into face select mode. 
How did Blender fill in the circle? The answer? Blender had to create a vertex in the center of the mesh, and he had 32 triangular faces to connect with each of the 32 vertices on the circle's, quote, circumference, close quote. That's a lot of possibly unnecessary geometry just to fill a circle. I'm now back in Blender 2.63, and I'll do the same thing, adding a mesh circle to the scene. I'll go into the operator panel with the intention of filling the circle in. Instead of a checkbox, we have a drop-down called Fill Type. The options are Nothing, Vertex Fan, or Ngon. Nothing means no fill. Vertex Fan is the same type of fill as in a non-B-mesh, a uh, quote, fan, unquote, of 32 triangular faces around the center vertex. Select Ngon. Go into Edit Mode. Note in the Information panel, we still have 32 vertices and just created one face with 32 sides, a genuine 32 agon. No center vertex, no 32 faces. The same logic applies to the cylinder, which is just an extruded circle. I'll switch to Layer 2 and tab into Object Mode. I'll add a cylinder and scroll to the Operator panel on the tool shelf. The same options for Fill Type exist as for the circle, except the default of Ngon. Tab into Edit Mode and you'll see one top face, our familiar 32 agon, not the vertex fan as in the fill geometry. Finally, I'd like to show you a new feature, Dissolves, which can really help your modeling. I'll switch to Layer 3 and tab into Object Mode. I'll add a cylinder again, but this time I'll select Vertex Fan, which is the way filling the top of the cylinder worked before B-Mesh. I'll tab into Edit Mode and deselect the vertices. Look at the top of the cylinder. There's a center vertex with 32 triangular faces, as we would expect. Suppose we just want to convert the vertex fan into an N-gon. I'll try this in the old-fashioned way by selecting the center vertex and pressing the delete key. I'll select vertices. This didn't work. Not only is the vertex deleted, but so are the triangular faces. The only problem is that the cylinder top is open. That's not what we want. We want one face for the cylinder top, we just want the vertex gone. I'll press Control z to undo the delete. Now I'll press the delete key again, and this time I'll scroll down and select Dissolve. Dissolve is really neat. It deletes the vert vertices and creates a 32 agon at the top of the cylinder, just as if we had selected Ngon in the first place. We'll go into Dissolve in more depth in later B-Mesh tutorials. I hope this gives you a start to understanding the power of B-Mesh. After a bit of practice, I think you'll become a B-Mesh fanatic in no time. Personally, I think many Blender modeling tutorials and modeling practices will need to be redone or rewritten to take advantage of B-Mesh because it promises to make mesh modeling not only easier, but more to the point, better. See you in the next tutorial. Happy Blendering!